Berger's disease, IgA nephropathy. So, what is the classical feature? Basically, there is a mesangial proliferation. You know that there is a epithelium, endothelium, subendothelium, and mesangium. So, there is a mesangial proliferation. Polyclonal IgA is the one which is uh, uh, multiplied, and IgA C3 and IgG are the ones which basically will deposit. How does a patient of Berger's disease typically present is a very, very important question. It is called recurrent benign hematuria. Patient will have respiratory infection like sore throat. Within 2 to 3 days, he will develop hematuria. Unlike in PSGN, post epicoglomenephritis, after about 3 weeks, there is a development of hematuria. There is a reason it is called Sympharyngitic hematuria is the name which is being given for the IgA nephropathy is what you need to basically remember. And it is called benign recurrent hematuria. Every time there is a little sore throat, patient keep developing hematuria. So benign recurrent hematuria. But is there any proteinuria? There is no proteinuria. But the absence of proteinuria can't be called pathognomonic is what you need to basically uh, be remembered. Now doctor, acute pancreatitis is uh, MLS is included in the Ransom's criteria. Now, is MLS included in Ransom's criteria? No. That's the reason it has no prognostic but only diagnostic value is what you need to be remembered. CT. What is the importance of CT? If you use the CT, you can grade the severity of the pancreatitis. You will look how much of necrosis is there in the pancreas. Less than one third, up to two thirds of pancreas, more than two thirds of pancreas. To what extent is the necrosis you can be able to quantify using the CT. Hence CT is called the best imaging modality is what need to be remembered. Then between TPN versus nasogenal feeding, which is better? Earlier there used to be a concept called nil oral if there is pancreatitis, but that is no more in vogue. So that is the reason nasogenal feeding is better than total parenteral nutrition is also a true statement. Between ERCP versus CT, which is better? CT is always better compared to that of the ERCP. Ultrasound can only tell a edematous pancreas. It can't be used to diagnose CT is the best modality is what you have to fundamentally remember. Now doctor, enteral versus parenteral nutrition. One question they ask in every PG medical entrance in general surgery, sutures, needles, TPN. Bands. These four are very, very crucial topics which you should basically remember. So, post operatively, we give enteral nutrition so that we want to keep the gut in uh, activity so that you can avoid development of mucosal atrophy. Similarly, if there is any enterocutaneous fistula, then that becomes an indication for parenteral nutrition instead of enteral. And uh, if you give enteral nutrition, it stimulates the production of the local secretory immunoglobulins which are produced in the gut is what you have to fundamentally remember. So I hope for the online students, Neelima, Kapil, Chendu, everybody, the voice is loud and clear, I believe. <coughs> Today I actually have to attend a banquet of... Uh, the local clinical uh, general medicine uh, physician. So, uh, I thought uh, let me not bunk the class. There I can get delayed by about one hour or two hours. So, it does not delay. But uh, to be with you is uh, much more a precious time for me than being in the middle of a group of uh, general medicine guys and uh, uh, in a conference telling that I did this much research, that much research, finally found E. coli in the urine in 150 patients. 
so my study is like that and everybody will be having a sip of brandy in the last row so instead of that i thought the evening can be more wonderful by spending with you maybe i will be one hour delayed over there so doctor um um esophageal adenocarcinoma why is it increasing in the modern time because of the obesity sedentary life reflux is increasing so there is a reason it is the lower part of the esophagus where it is more common is what you need to basically remember and a uh, lot of times it arises from the barrett's esophagus and uh, tobacco exposure is a risk factor and uh, in the modern era where obesity is a global pandemic there is an increase of incidence of the esophageal adenocarcinoma is what need to be remembered in rheumatology <clears throat> one question is generally asked rheumatoid arthritis sle systemic cirrhosis dermatomyositis polymyositis one type of vasculitis is a very quite often asked in mcq in the exam so doctor systemic cirrhosis mein kya hota skin involvement skin involvement and the skin becomes so shiny it's called salt and pepper appearance is what they will be developing with lot of minute telangiectasis into the skin and what is the cause of death in systemic cirrhosis pulmonary hypertension kills the patient ultimately pulmonary hypertension progressive pulmonary hypertension then bleomycin is one of the drug which is implicated to be causative for the development of the systemic cirrhosis there are some other drugs pentagosin hepatite suppressants and uh, uh, there also the ones which basically will predispose to the development of pulmonary hypertension and uh, um, the systemic cirrhosis like illness porphyria you go to pgi jipmer or any exam porphyria is a top topic high yielding one question will definitely come from that disgusting list of enzymes which you need to map it with which type of porphyria which you need to map it with which type of inheritance pattern and which you need to map it with whether psychiatric features dermatological features which are the predominant features in the case of uh, the porphyria acute intermittent porphyria is an exception from the others photosensitivity is not a feature unlike the other types of the porphyria is what need to be remembered what lead to development of uh, acute intermittent porphyria doctor hmb synthase deficiency similarly what do you find in the urine porphobilinogen is the one which is typically increased in the urine and there are neurological features visceral features like abdominal pain but not dermatological features in the case of the acute intermittent porphyria is what you have to fundamentally remember now doctor niacin if you give as a hypolipidemic drug what is the important side effect flushing will be there flushing what is the cause of the flushing the flushing is because of the increased production of prostaglandin d2 pg d2 that is the reason we combine leropiprant leropiprant is a inhibitor of the prostaglandin d2 receptors called dp1 receptors so dp1 antagonist will be leropiprant is the one which is being used is what is asked by the examiner so what is the general rule you should not forget one question on hypolipidemic drugs it has to be there huh? then varnaki encephalopathy one of the oldest question on the planet cerebellar involvement vitamin b1 deficiency and the presence of ophthalmoplegia confabulation etc etc there will be no seizures it is not frontal lobes which will suffer atrophy what are the structures that suffer atrophy in case of the wernicke encephalopathy doctor one of the favorite questions of the examiner dorso medial part of the thalamus there will be hemorrhagic lesions in mammillary bodies midline of the cerebellum periaqueductal gray matter and the trochlear and abscess that's the reason diplopia will be there 
diplopia, confabulation, etc. are the features of the corsicles. I mean, Vodniki, encephalopathy is what you need to remember. So, confusion, ataxia, diplopia. The triad of clinical features. Coming to subarachnoid hemorrhage. What is the investigation of choice of the favorite MCQ in the entrance you go? CD scan. CD scan has 95% sensitivity if you do it within 72 hours. If you do lumbar puncture, all the tarbases which entered subarachnoid is between the meninges. So, all the RBCs which are there in the bleed between the meninges will enter into the CSF and they get broken down and release the bilirubin leading to xanthochromia is what you need to remember. Similarly, there are some complications of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Re-bleeding can occur within the first two weeks. Whenever you have subarachnoid patient doctor, hemorrhage patient, two things, most important part in the treatment kya hota hai? You have to hydrate the patient very well. Hydrate the patient. Give calcium channel blockers. So that you will be avoiding development of vasospasm, which can lead to hypoxia to the cerebral matter and can lead to focal neurological deficits and seizures. They can develop if vasospasm is there. To avoid vasospasm, hydrate the patient very well as much as possible and then give calcium channel blockers is the most important part of the treatment. So doctor, if you look at the major causes of this complications of the subarachnoid hemorrhage may, why there is a delayed neurological deficit, re rupture hydrocaphalus, vasospasm, hyponatremia, these are the important complications which you have to basically remember. What is triple H therapy in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Hypervolemia, give as much fluid as possible. Hypertension control and uh, hemodilution by giving fluids is what you need to achieve in order to prevent the development of the cerebral vasospasm is what you need to basically uh, <coughs> remember. Where do you see pulmonary renal syndrome is a very important question. Where both lung and also kidney are involved. Good posture if you take. How will a patient will good, good posture will come to you? Hematuria plus hemoptysis. Hunter virus infection, renal failure plus alveolar hemorrhage leading to respiratory distress. Similarly, microscopic polyangiitis also will have both the renal and also the lung involvement is what you need to basically remember. So, vaginal microscopic polyangiitis, good posture, SLE, there are various scenarios where both the lung and also the involvement of the kidney is what you typically come across. We have uploaded this paper along with explanations uh, in the um, uh, download section. You can download it and uh, uh, I think uh, ask our online people to enter what is the password with which they encrypted so that they can easily can open it up without calling back. <coughs> So, what is the management of psoriatic arthritis? Beautiful question. Which drug which is commonly used is known to exacerbate the psoriasis among malarials? Chloroquine. Very high yield topic in entrance doctor. What are the list of drugs which are known to exacerbate and trigger the psoriatic flare ups? is a very important MCQ that list to batti marna hi padega. There is no uh, exception. Lithium, antimalarials, propranolol, quinidine, indomethacin are the group of drugs which are known to lead to development of triggering of the psoriasis. Mainly lithium is frequently asked any entrance you go doctor. Huh? Then direct thrombin inhibitors. So, you know, as the as we keep uh, finishing up one, one after other PGI, AIMS, All India, DNB, CET question papers on every Friday evening, just mark in your uh, diary to not go anywhere. 
including your fiance's marriage also. So, uh, please do come down. We will have a review discussion and uh, we will review all papers of AIMS All India, PGI, DNB, CET Friday evenings. Uh, maybe we will take more Fridays. But you will start recognizing there is a repeating pattern. And that pattern already we have published in the form of high yield topic list which you need to review. Right? We are reproving the fact. And finishing it is all about preparation. It is not that I read physiology, then I read cardiology, then I went very logically. It does not matter. Whichever the way you went, do you know common facts which examiner want to get an answer from you? It is not that you read physiology, then autonomic nervous system, then you read the pharmacology, then you read in medicine. Jarvat nahi hai. Uska jarvat nahi hai. It is not that only those who read biochemistry, physiology very well only will get in good hold on medicine. Vaisa kuch bhi nahi hai. It is a big encyclopedia of facts, entrance preparation. Do you know those minimum 8 to 10,000 facts? from 1100 topics. Do you know or not? How many of you know? And how less you know than the other people who are going for entrance? That is the only deciding factor, let me tell you. So, doctor, out of all this, now you know thrombolytics, streptokinase, urokinase, altaplase, which one is given per body uh, dosage according to the body weight, which is thrombus specific, which is thrombus non fibrin specific and non specific. All the differences are there no? in uh, uh, thrombolytics. Oh, table to panna padega. Kiska half life kitna hai. Similarly, you should also read what are the thrombin inhibitors. Is a favorite topic. So, dabigatran is a direct thrombin inhibitor. Can you give me the uh, board, please? <coughs> Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there is a very good question from Chendu. Is there a subject test tomorrow? Subject test, we are making it on Monday. We will also conduct it on uh, Saturday. Um, but uh, discussion nahi ho rahe, kyunki 4 to 8 in the evening, you have a gynops class. Um, I mean, medicine, final year subject classes will be there on Saturday, Sunday evening, 4 to 8. PNC doctors, everybody get time during that time. So, Monday we made a subject test today. So, 2 to 5 is the subject test, 5 to 8 we will have a discussion. So, this uh, Monday we will have orthopedics. So, prepare and come and I will discuss the paper. Right? <coughs> now, doctor, um, where are we? Ha. They go, heparin, if you take heparin, how does it basically act? Heparin will go and tell plasmin. Plasmin is also called antithrombin. So then it will go and inhibit the thrombin. Hence, heparin is called indirect thrombin inhibitor because it acts through activation of the plasmin. Whereas, if you take all these direct thrombin inhibitors, they will go directly and act on the thrombin and break it down is what you need to remember. <clears throat> so, that is Dabigatran. So, direct thrombin inhibitors are in turn divided into bivalent and univalent. Argatroban, Melagatran and Dabigatran, they are all basically what? They are all univalent the direct thrombin inhibitors, out of which Dabigatran is the one which is orally available is what you need to basically understand. Reversed splitting of second heart sound. Aortic pahla aata aur pulmonic baad mein aayega. Any delay of aortic or a early arrival of pulmonic will lead to splitting, reversal. Reversal is what will basically happen. So, what will happen in WPW syndrome, Dr. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome? Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome mein what is actually happening? The uh, conduction of the SJ nodal impulses without passing through the AV node 
they are basically passing through the aberrant pathway, aberrant pathway without passing through the AV node. Okay, so that is the reason the pulmonic closure in WPW syndrome becomes earlier, whereas the aortic left ventricular closure of the aortic valve remains the same time, and because of the delay, so. Uh, this become earlier hence there is a reversal is what you typically come across. So what are the various conditions doctor? If there is a left bundle branch block, aortic valve closes later than pulmonic valve. So LBBB can cause delayed aortic closure. Hypertension hai, left ventricle has to pump slowly against the hypertensive root of aorta. It takes a little longer ejection to occur. Similarly, any atherosclerotic heart disease also will make TPR to increase and the aortic ejection become delayed and aortic valve closure become delayed. Then as early pulmonic closure, why will it occur? Wolf Parkinson White syndrome kya ho jata? Without AV nodal delay, aberrant pathway directly connects atrium to ventricle, especially right ventricle. And hence, right ventricular electrical activation occur quite early, and that is the reason early closure of the pulmonic valve will be there and reversal. So, one question on heart zones, one question on JVP. Ye to har ek PG medical entrance ka rivaaz hai. Everything you must master on these two. What is the cause of diarrhea? Basically, hyperthyroidism, carcinoid, diabetes, even diabetes also. Why diabetes? Diabetes can lead to autonomic neuropathy. Autonomic neuropathy can lead to constipation, diarrhea. Anything can basically happen. When will you say that there is a mitral regurgitation but not a pure mitral stenosis? What makes you to think so? Can you give me the board, please? Suppose, if mitral stenosis is there, doctor, what will happen? Left atrium say left ventricle ko blood ana slow ho jata. Left ventricle ke upar utna kaam nahi hai usko. So left ventricle has no reason to hypertrophy or enlarge. When will ventricle will enlarge? Suppose if mitral regurgitation is there in addition to mitral stenosis. Then every time ventricle is contracting, it is losing the blood back into left atrium. Once more, all the blood is coming back into left ventricle. So, if you regular blood, regurgitant blood, then left ventricle will be thugged. It will be dilated. Ho so, if the dilatation is there, means it is no more pure mitral stenosis unless there is an associated. MR. How will you recognize that there is a dilated left ventricle normally apical beat point of maximal impulse PMI. Where do you find medial to mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space? But if there is any dilatation, it will go out and down from the fifth intercostal space lateral to the mid clavicular line. So that is how you recognize left ventricle enlargement is there. If it is there, it is no more a pure mitral stenosis by there is an associated mitral regurgitation is what you have to basically remember. Similarly, whenever the left ventricle fails because of the regurgitation, a failed ventricle will produce third heart sound. Third heart sound. Why a failed ventricle will produce third heart sound? Normally, left ventricle is supposed to pump into iota. If it failed means it is unable to pump into Iota. So, some blood is remaining in the left ventricle at the end of systole. So, next time when it is getting filled at the beginning of diastole, diastole kambu bolte S1, S2, S1. S1 is closure of mitral valve. S2 is closure of aortic valve. S1, S2 ke beech mein kya hota hai? Ventricular systole. At the end of ventricular systole, 
आर्टिक वाइल क्लोजेस एंड एस टू हैपन्स एस टू एंड एस वन के बीच में क्या होता है डायस्टली सो इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ दिस डायस्टली वेन द वेंट्रिकल इज गेटिंग रिसीविंग ब्लड दट रिसीविंग ब्लड इज जंपिंग इन टू ए पूल ऑफ पूल ऑफ अनपंपड ब्लड इन ए फेल्ड वेंट्रिकल एंड दट प्रोड्यूसर्स वॉट यू कॉल थर्ड हार्ट सॉन्ड सो द प्रेजेंस ऑफ एस थ्री सिग्निफाइज एल वी फेलियर Presence of LV failure only will occur if the MS is associated with MR, and if the MR is not there, only MS is there. Left ventricle को काम ही नहीं है। अगर काम नहीं है तो fail होने का chance कहाँ होता? नहीं होगा। हाँ? Suppose if you say I am unable to read because of the SPM posting, we don't agree. If you say I am unable to read because of casualty posting, we will agree. If you say I am reading very well because it is casualty posting also, we don't agree. Huh? So that is how you need to correlate. So doctor, any third heart stone, displaced apex beat, left ventricle dilatation, they are all against the pure mitral stenosis unless MR is associated, they won't be uh, there. Now doctor, what are the features of pseudo hypoparathyroidism? is a very very important question pseudo hypoparathyroidism kya hota hai receptor level resistance parathormon is produced but at receptor it is unable to act whether it can't act on receptor or whether it is not produced at all whichever the situation ek hi hota na pth ka non production is equal to pth inability to act on receptor whatever it is there ultimately it will lead to hypocalcemia and there is a resistance At the receptor level, but production is normal. In fact, more production will be there. So raised PTH will be there. So it is a PTH receptor defect is what you need to basically remember. In addition to this, what else will they have? The patients they will be having absent radii. Some of the phenotypic features will be there. In addition, what is meant by pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism? Only the phenotypic features found in pseudo hypoparathyroidism will be there, but receptors are good, PTH production is good. Only phenotypic features which are found in pseudo hypoparathyroidism only are found, right? That's the reason it is called pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism is what you have to basically remember. Then comes the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is a very very important question. I am very happy to see 45 plus online viewers on Friday evening. In spite of a very attractive discotic hip hop, all the way from Calcutta. Uh, Calcutta is one of the best places for the nightlife. So, in spite of all that, uh, you are able to come back to the discussion. That would be a graceful opportunity for us. In fact, so Dr. Duquesne's muscular dystrophy. is basically defective gene all of you know creatinine kinase levels are typically elevated but when it becomes very severe kya ho jata to produce creatinine kinase you require some muscle no if it is completely dystrophied also ck levels will fall down but initial phases mein ck is elevated and what type of inheritance pattern is the favorite question of the examiner x linked recessive is the typical pattern is what you need to remember ankylosing spondylitis retards disease besets syndrome what is common thing for all this they are called zero negative spondyloarthropathies patients will have back ache they are called entosopathies why because typically there is an inflammation at the point where ligaments attached to the ten tendons attached to the bones at the tendinous points of insertion on the bone there is an inflammation hence called enthesitis so hla b27 is associated foot joint involvement will be there skeleton is divided into appendicular skeleton of the hands and axial skeleton of the spine so typically they will have spine involvement there are all the two features where will you see snophilia now you know isnophilia is such a high yielding topic the examiner will ask either abpa 
ट्रॉपिकल इस्नोफिलिया सिंड्रोम हाइपर इस्नोफिलिक मायलजिया सिंड्रोम और सिंपल फैक्ट्स ऑन इस्नोफिलिया सो डॉक्टर चेक स्ट्रॉस एनी ड्रग रिएक्शन पैरासिटिक इन्फेस्टेशन इन ऑल दो सीनेरियो देर इज ए डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इस्नोफिलिया इज वॉट यू हैव टू बेसिकली रिमेंबर नाउ डॉक्टर क्लबिंग This is the favorite question of the cynical examiner. There will be hundred causes of clubbing. If you tell twenty causes, he will ask what is the twenty-first cause, right? So, uh, lung carcinoma, pulmonary fibrosis, lung abscess. There are all the scenarios where you find sinuses. COPD may sinus clubbing hoga ya nahi is the question. COPD per se will never cause clubbing, but if COPD is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma, can it be associated? Why? Why? Ah, what is the common denominator between bronchogenic carcinoma and COPD smoking? Usi smoking ke maje se COPD ke saath hi saath bronchogenic carcinoma aage to. Then only there is a development of clubbing or hemoptysis. Pure COPD does not lead to clubbing or hemoptysis. Is what you have to basically remember. So heart disease, GI, GIT causes so many causes of clubbing. Somehow, just go through the list. Automatically, you will answer with common sense. After total gastrectomy, what complications can arise? Stomach is important for absorption of the iron. Ultimately, iron is absorbed in the duodenum. But stomach is important. The acid produced in the stomach is important for the conversion of ferrous and ferric. So, iron deficiency, folate deficiency, and if the stomach is not there, there is a sudden dumping of the contents which are hyperaspirated from the esophagus into the small intestine. That leads to diarrhea. and typically whenever such a large quantity of content is dumped into osmotically active content is dumped into small intestine it will absorb all the fluid into the gut and the fluid will suffer hypovolemia and patient can go into hypotension and he can collapse so collapse after taking meals can be there postprandial hypoglycemia why when there is a dumping of Content into the small intestine, all that get absorbed and that lead to immediate hyperglycemia. That will stimulate release of insulin. That in turn will lead to react to hypoglycemia. So there can be postprandial hypoglycemic episodes which can occur. Is what you have to basically remember. Dumping syndromes, early and late dumping syndromes. Favorite question of the examiner. You must know all the differences. Cryptorchidism. There can be development of seminoma into that undescended testis. There can be sterility which can occur, and uh, undescended testis may be sequestered in the inguinal canal. The reason laparoscopy definitely has got a role in the diagnosis. And is there when will you do archidopexy? Is a very important question. Within one year. Within one year. and uh, the testis should be brought back into the scrotum before the boy goes to school is what you need to basically remember then of course when will he go to school nobody is two and half years only chalo chalo aaj op day hai kal operation theater ka day hai where do we have time to bring you up get out go to the school your teacher will take care is what when mom is surgeon dad is pediatrician where is the time to bring up children ha huh? so uh that's reason doctor uh, <clears throat> don't miss the simple happinesses of life in the rush for uh, academics in the rush for uh, uh, earning money becoming big and great in addition the simple pleasures of the life are the component of it so doctor one question is asked on glasgow coma scale 
What was the recent question we had? MMSC. Mini mental status examination also you should read. So, eye response has got no eye opening, eye opening, eye opening to speech, eye opening spontaneously. You know the list, no? So, just review that and uh, definitely it will be a rewarding uh, question, uh, topic. Now, coming to epigastric hernia. A defect in the linear alba which lead to epigastric hernia. Multiple epigastric hernial points will be there in about one fifth of cases. More common in the case of the males. Pregnancy may what increases in incidence? Incisional hernias, etc. They are more likely. And common age group when it will occur is between 20 to 50 years. And uh, uh, there are the various facts to be remembered. Varicocele is one important area. It is more common on the left side rather than on the right side is what you need to basically remember. And what is the cause? Because the left testicular vein drains into left to right, renal vein, whereas right side it drains into bigger IVC, easy to drain. Left side into a narrow vessel it is draining. So that is the reason there can be improper drainage with a back pressure leading to varicosities into the pampiniform plexus, hence varicocele is more common on the left side. And it can lead to development of infertility which is also true. And whenever there is any left sided renal carcinoma, you should uh, always look for it uh, whenever there is a development of the varicocele which is developing rapidly is what need to be fundamentally remembered. Now doctor, what are the factors with which bladder cancer is associated? It is associated with, huh? not associated, yeah. It is associated with smoking, histosomiasis and occupational exposure in industrialized countries. Don't tell smoke is into air and it is not going into bladder. How did it cause bladder cancer? It can still cause bladder cancer, doctor, because nicotine is sufficient carcinogenic. So, smoking and carcinoma bladder, very high association which you should not basically forget. Similarly, hairdressers who do dyeing regularly are also at exposure to the dye and that also predisposed to the development of the uh, bladder cancer. What are absorbable sutures? Itna discussions, mock test set in karne ke baag, अगर आप सूचर वाला क्वेश्चन रॉंग करें तो एग्जाम हॉल में या आई आई फेल इन इंस्पायरिंग यू हैं सो डॉक्टर डोंट फॉरगेट पॉली ग्लाइकोलिक एसिड पॉली लैक्टिक एसिड पॉली डाइऑक्सेनोन एंड कैप्रोलैक्टोन सो एंड कैटगेट सो दिस आर ऑल बेसिकली व्हाट एब्जॉर्बेबल एंड नॉन एब्जॉर्बेबल they are made up of special silk or a synthetic polypropylene polyester or nylon is what you have to ultimately remember doctor. <clears throat> now, if the broadcast is uh, smooth without any video freezing, eh? 